and sorry is not enough. Enough said. Call Ed. EdBernstein.com It's the Ed Bernstein Show, Home Edition. Now, here's your host, Ed Bernstein. Hi, welcome to the show. Hey, with me now is Mr. Fremont Street himself. And a little bit later, one of his new tenants is going to be the finest steakhouse in Las Vegas coming to Fremont Street. Chef Barry will be here. Uh, Dirk Stevens, I'm calling you Mr. Fremont Street now. You read the How you do it? Good to, good, to, good to see you, Ed. I wish I was in the studio with you, but uh, but these are some unique times, so good to see you. Yeah, well, look, I'm, I either see you at uh, let me say, I either see you at the studio, at the hockey games, or outside um, at the... Uh, yeah, the downtown Las Vegas Event Center. Exactly, exactly. And you've been, uh, look, we have no hockey, but you've been a very, very busy man. Um, in addition to, you know, running the D Hotel and the Golden Gate, you are building an unbelievably architecturally spectacular hotel on Fremont Street called Circa. Yeah, we, um, we've been working on it now for, uh, for a little while. I mean, it goes back to August of 2016 when we, uh, we purchased the Las Vegas Club. And then, uh, you know, a little, little bit of time to uh, evaluate that building, then the determination that we were going to demolish it, and then uh, work through the process of, of concept and design with uh, our, our architectural firm, uh, Steelman and Associates, and uh, yeah, we announced Circa in January of uh, last year, January of 2019, and now uh, just uh, just last week, we were able to announce that we're going to open uh, open the the casino portion um, and the restaurants and garage mahal and all that on uh, on October 28th of this year, and then the hotel tower uh, before New Year's. So you're actually ahead of schedule. And I understand you started taking reservations for hotel rooms this week. Yeah, we did on uh, we did on uh, Wednesday morning, and uh, yeah, it went great. Amazing. You know, I'm old enough to remember um, that old Las Vegas club, uh, the Mel Experts, uh, Jackie Gone, and and how much those guys were um, into sports. And I know that you've been able to, at, at, you know, continue that type of um, um, genuine theme that, that occurred on Fremont Street in the old days. And at the, at the same time, you know, bringing it up to the 21st century. I mean, uh, and I'm happy you've done that because you, your sports book now is the talk of the town there. Yeah, you know, we're pretty excited about it. Uh, you know, maybe it goes back to my old days of coming to Las Vegas 30 years ago. But uh, I still remember those moments when I walked into Caesars Palace and I saw that sports book and or the first time I walked into the Westgate um, back then, the Las Vegas Hilton, and saw that sports book, and I thought, "Wow, what 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 great moments!" And we wanted to create something that was pretty special, so when people come from all over the country, they can walk into the sports book and circuit and say, "Wow, this is the best thing we've ever seen." So, um, should be pretty interesting. It's theater style, three stories, uh, largest screen, and uh, should be a, should be a, a a real good attraction for all of Las Vegas. Yeah, and you have a lot of novel ideas and uh, that you're uh, trying there. I mean, the, the parking garage, I, and, what, and I don't really, um, I don't, I'm not really well versed on what's going on, but I understand your parking garage here is quite unusual as well. Yeah, you know, the the parking garage, we wanted to do something that was pretty special, so special that we had to name it. So it's called Garage Mahal, and uh, and really what it is, it's it's a it's a great transportation hub. So the first floor is all really about ride sharing. Really, this is this is uh, the first time ride sharing and that technology has been really fully taken into the initial design of a hotel casino. So it'll be great for limos, cabs, uh, all the all the different ride share companies. And then um, you know, then then we'll have obviously a few uh, pretty special novelties with the, with the garage. Uh, it'll be very very clean, very very well lit you know, a concierge on every floor type of thing to be able to help people out with, 
where they're going. Um, I've always thought that parking garages, uh, you know, I just didn't see a reason why they needed to be dirty and not well lit, you know, and that I'm not saying anything about Vegas, but Vegas, but I'm saying about all over the country, uh, parking garages are always, you know, been treated as a necessary evil. And, uh, we wanted to create a, create a situation in this great transportation hub that was, uh, that was uh, notable, a good experience where you feel comfortable and safe and, uh, and then ready to go to the casino. I, I think it's a very clever idea because you have so many um, tourists that, you know, coming from the Strip to get downtown and, and they're going to make it easy for them to get back and forth. I mean, that's a, a, a really a good idea. The, um, you also have some really um, incredible restaurants that you're going in there. Um, a little later on the show, uh, Barry, uh, Chef Barry is going to be on, but, you know, he's very, I mean, he's probably the best chef we've had in Las Vegas over the last 20 years. I don't know how long he's been here, but I remember him from nine and, and the Palm first opened and then Scotch eighties. And, and now uh, once again, keeping that tradition on Fremont street, because I remember um, the best place to get a steak in the seventies was down on Fremont street. You wanted a good steak. You went down on Fremont street. We're going to be coming back for that now. Right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very excited about uh, our, uh, our whole list of uh, restaurant tours coming coming into circus. So we uh, we really think we kind of covered uh, you know a broad a broad range, um, not just of restaurants and the types of food, but also the the types of characters and their backgrounds. So I think it's a it's a great mix of uh, restaurants and restaurant tours. Yeah, I mean Fremont Street has had a, a very interesting history, and and it looks it seems like over the last uh, 20, 30 years is trying been trying to define itself on what the demographic is there. Um, how, how do you look at it historically and, and where do you see it in the future? I think what's kind of what happened on Fremont Street, I mean, I came into, I came in and bought into the Golden Gate in 2006. And then, uh, you know, a couple of years later, we have the big recession. So things were a little bit different then. Um, you know, maybe you could say I got pretty lucky because things got a little less expensive and I was able to grow a bit. And I think what we've seen you know, in the last, uh, last 10 years, it's just some continued growth. Um, uh, it's been terrific. You know, when, when Zappos and Tony Shea came in, that brought a lot of entrepreneurs. And then, you know, with what happened with, uh, the new city hall and then the mob museum and the Smith center, and then Fremont East, it's been, it's just been good to be part of, uh, watching, watching this whole Renaissance downtown, uh, take place. And, and I think what you're seeing with Fremont street is, is really, it's become um, a great addition to all of Las Vegas. Um, a lot of times people ask me, well, who's the Fremont Street customer? And I say, well, the Fremont Street customer, it's really the Las Vegas customer. You know, last year, there's 43 million people that visited Las Vegas and 24 million of them visited uh, downtown. So, so really, when you're taking half the visitation um, coming downtown, it's, it's really, it's the Las Vegas customer. So for us, it's just kind of a, um, you know, an element where you can go back and you can kind of see where Vegas started and you can walk from casino to casino across the street. So there's just a little bit of a, you can old town, old town element to it that I think, uh, people find pretty attractive. Right. No, no, I think you're correct. I, I, I don't have a relative or friend that has come to visit Las Vegas that at least sometime in her trip, they want to go down and, and view Fremont Street. Everybody does. Um, what about the rooms? What can you tell me about the rooms you're building? Well, um, yeah, Circus is going to be, uh, Circus actually is currently the tallest building downtown. So uh, that took over from the D, which was the tallest building. Um, from a hotel perspective, really what we wanted to do is we wanted to add um, a bit more uh, product that within our organization we don't have enough of. Um, you should see my, my meetings on Thursdays with our hosts who's getting sweets. We just don't have enough of them. So we're going to have, um, we're going to open up Circa with a disproportionate amount of suites. Uh, all the hotel rooms are going to be, um, um, larger than what you would, what, what you would really see normally. I think, I think our standard rooms, um, averages 445 feet. So I'd say that's, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty generous, um, um, from a, from a standard hotel room perspective. And, um, you know, one thing we wanted to do is, is, and one of the reasons why we didn't keep the Vegas club was just, just because, um, trends of, of customers keep changing. And the one that's the most dramatic to me is how tall customers are. It's really amazing. You know, 
my son, you know, I'm, I'm 5'11". My son is uh, almost four inches taller than me, and all his buddies are that much taller. So so I wanted to do something that was going to last for a little while. So our ceiling heights are a little bit taller. Shower heads are a little bit taller. And that was something, you know, you just couldn't do with with an older property, property like Vegas Club. You, you just can't add six inches. So we decided it was best to start brand new. So I think it's a... It's, um, you know, a property that's going to have uh, larger than average hotel rooms, um, a lot of suites, um, a lot of attractions, and a little more ceiling height than maybe what uh, what you'd see elsewhere. You're also going to have, uh, as part of your sports book, you're having a, uh, a live studio down there as well? Yeah, we are. You know, we have, uh, we have an interest in uh, the Vegas Sports Information Network. So, uh, um, you know, that's the network with Brent Musburger and now all the shows. And now it's... Uh, you know, shown throughout Canada and on the East coast and whatnot. And it's, um, you know, seven day a week operation. So we put the, uh, we put their film, um, and television studio inside of, uh, inside of Circa. And, uh, it's going to have, uh, as a backdrop, a great back backdrop of the three story of the three story sports book with the odd boards in the back and everything. So should be a great venue for Visa to grow with. Yeah. You can, I'm sure, I'm sure you can get some, uh, some, some surprise guests down there as well. I'm sure. Absolutely. How about entertainment wise? As far as entertainment, Ed, one of the key things we're really trying to focus in on is our outdoor pool amphitheater at, at Circa. And and a lot of what we did was we developed this based upon what we learned at the downtown Las Vegas event center during a lot of these great Golden Knights watch parties and things. So we um, we designed this up. It's going to be a great place to watch sports, great place to hang at the pool, some great music. and uh, And that's really where our focus on entertainment is. What makes it an amphitheater? Well, the fact that it's a multi-tiered outdoor pool venue. So we'll have a total of six pools, eight spas, but multiple tiers with uh, really the outdoor largest outdoor screen that, that I'm aware of. So it's um, if, you, if you're familiar with the downtown Las Vegas Event Center, the screen at Circa, the outdoor screen, is uh, about three and a half times as big. Over the last uh, three, four months, I mean, it takes a lot of courage to be building what you're building, um, you know, and doing what you're doing as a businessman downtown. Um, you had to have been concerned, been scared. Um, how have you been feeling over the last three, four months? Well, I appreciate you asking that. Uh, you know, it was um, it was something. I mean, we were we were very fortunate. The governor uh, determined that construction was essential in the state of Nevada. And uh, we were able to continue construction on on Circa, um, you know, hundred thousand jobs in in construction directly and indirectly in the state. So we were uh, we were very fortunate that construction was able to continue. Um, then, you know, when when uh, when uh, we get to what's really the biggest week of the year in in Vegas, St. Patrick's Day to March Madness, you know, that all gets canceled, and you know everything everything stops right at what should have been our, our biggest week of the year. So yeah, there was an awful lot of, an awful lot of concern, you know, and then, and then, you know, with issues with all of our, all of our employees, how are they going to make it through? And, and then, and then how are we going to be able to handle this unknown, this uncertainty? You know, we, we didn't know when we were opening back up or, or really what it was going to take to open back up. Remember we went into phase one in Nevada for quite a while and, not really knowing. So, um, yeah, the, the uncertainty, um, I would say it's kind of took its toll, but I'm, uh, I'm just very glad we're, 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 where we are now. And I'm just praying some of the numbers across the country and here, here in Vegas, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't start jumping up from a pandemic perspective because, uh, boy, oh boy, I think people really needed to get back to work and they're excited to be back to work. Yeah. Well, when all this is in your rear view mirror, maybe there's a book in there for you to write about this. How about, um, one more question. Um, employees, are you hiring people now? Yeah. You know, we just started, um, we just started with, uh, hiring, um, really our, the first division, um, which was uh, slots and slot, uh, slot tax. And, uh, the reason for that is, is because, uh, it's getting closer. We're going to start placing, um, some of the first slot machines inside of circa, I believe at the end of July. So now, now we're in the process. It's going to be going division by division, and uh, everybody can uh, can uh, um, just go to our website, go to our HR department, 
but we're in the process now of starting to line up division by division, all the interviews, and uh, we look forward to doing a lot of hiring over the next few months. Well, that's terrific. We all look forward to uh, October. Maybe we can come out uh, sometime in October with some cameras and actually get to some of the actual footage of the hotel. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. Be happy to do that. Well, thank you so much, uh, Derek Stevens. Um, and hey, good luck. And, you know, I can empathize with you the last three or four months. I mean, you, you know, I mean, it takes courage and, uh, and just takes strength to do what you did, especially uh, the scale of the project on Fremont Street, you know, totally taking it to a, to a new level at a certain time that's so, so unpredictable. So um, I hope it brings you all the success you deserve. Thank you very much, Ed. Great to talk to you. Thank you. We'll be right back with Chef Barry. I grew up watching him on TV. He helped me with my case. He helped me with my case. He's always helping our community. They've got one of the largest jury verdicts in Nevada. I trust him. I trust him. I trust him. Enough said. Call Ed. Welcome back with me now. And I look, I talked about uh, um, this with Mr. Stevens. Um, Chef Barry is one of the probably the finest chef in the last 20 years that we've had in Las Vegas of having opened Thank up you. the Palms Hotel, having opened up uh, Scott Shady's and now, you know, opening up his new steakhouse uh, over at the, uh, at the uh, Circa Hotel. Um, his partners, uh, Yassine, um, okay, um, Leobi, and Marco, and I got to make hand motion when I say, Sissione, or close, <laughs> something like that. But Marco, Yassine, and, and Barry are um, three uh, restaurateurs that are to be uh, respected in this town. And uh, I, I am, look, I'm looking forward to it. I was telling Mr. Stevens that uh, I used to go in the 70s to go get a steak down at, uh, at Binion's because it was the best place to get a, a meal in those days. And look, in Fremont Street at one time was famous for shrimp cocktails, right? Yeah. <laughs> Your seafood's gonna be a little bit more upscale, I suspect. But we still do, we'll do a great version of a shrimp cocktail. So you're going to have to come and see our shrimp cocktail down at Barry's Downtown Prime. <laughs> Barry's Downtown Prime is, good, is located uh, in the New Circa Hotel. Um, now, I understand that there is going to be an age limit at the hotel, but not in the restaurant. That is correct. That is right? correct. So property- you have to be 21. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Yep. No, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the property is going to be an adult only 21 and over property, uh, which is the casino floor, the pool, a lot of the other venues, even the rooms. Uh, but for Barry's downtown time, we're working on, on logistics, but you come in with your family, even if members of the family are under 21 and dine with us uh, on property. Barry, when you were at nine, it was uh, very much a local hangout. I mean, yeah. it seems like when you go over to the uh, to the bar at nine and sit at the bar and eat something in, in the old days, uh, you know, you knew all the customers. Uh, they all knew you. Um, you know, you had that congeniality going on. It, it, you know, I know uh, Fremont Street's, you know, tourist center, but you're, you're really going to also emphasize the, the local business as well, I suspect. Yeah, we definitely have made relationships throughout the years. And... Um, it's really important to take care of our locals. We, we love the locals and it's amazing. I got to tell you though, I remember in the early days when you would come into nine steakhouse, I was like, wow, that's the big lawyer, Ed Bernstein in town. That's when I first moved there, you know? And I was like, Oh, that's Ed. We got to take care of Ed, you know? And now we're talking late years later, but I, uh, I always respected you and loved what you did the community wise. And we're happy to talk to you now. Yeah, well, look, these uh, both those restaurants that you um, worked at in Vegas before uh, both Nine and Scott Shady's had, you know, at that time that they were at their heights, the best food in town. Thank you. You know, the, the best. So just talk about your your new place. What's it going to look like? It's uh, well, here, here's the fun part of, of the restaurant is that when 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 we were brought on to, to take on this, this space and to lease the space from Circa. Give me, you move into the screen a little bit more, you've seen. Yeah. yeah. We, we wanted to bring on a group of architects that kind of saw eye to eye with us. So what you'll see with Circa, which is very interesting, you don't see with a lot of, of places, is that the hotel 
is built by a certain architecture firm, but we carved out our restaurant to be designed by a group called Punch. And it's, it's a couple of young guys, my brother's on their team, and it's a couple of young guys based in Vegas that do some really cool retro stuff, residential as well as commercial. And we sat down with them and we said, listen, this is executive chef Barry, chef owner, Marco and I, we, we, Marco comes from the wine world. I come from the operating and hospitality world. Barry comes from the chef world. We wanted to combine everything and bring back that old school downtown flair with something a little more modern. And they, they hit it. I mean, you'll see some renderings, a lot more renderings coming out soon in our next press release, but we're basically bringing back the fifties and sixties, almost touching a little of that seventies, like glitz and glamor. Uh, and, um, and it's just a beautiful room. It's a, it's, it's a sexy room. It's a room that caters large parties and small parties. We've got a little space for entertainment, but we think you guys will love it. And, uh, and Mr. Stevens is making it very easy to get in and out of the hotel in that new garage he's building, right? Garage Mahal. We love it. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the, the current state of, uh, of, you know, of, uh, COVID-19 and what it means to rest. I mean, restaurants got hit the hardest. Um, unfortunately, um, and you must've been a little bit nervous about opening, being in the middle of opening up a restaurant in, in this, uh, pandemic. Na- naturally, naturally, you know, it's, it's been, it's been a roller coaster ride, uh, for everyone. Mainly we feel for, for restaurants and, and our, our friends out there in the community that have been feeling the wrath of us since, uh, late February and then really mid March when everything shut down, but it's an ever changing uh, platform. It's an ever-changing uh, situation, uh, not only here in the U.S., but everywhere. So we're monitoring it very closely. We're working very closely. We had a, a great HR meeting today with, with someone we're bringing on to our team. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a little, it was a little nerve-wracking, but it's also, um, it's also giving us peace of mind to see that the restaurant community is getting together and working very proactively to, to find solutions. You know, I've been, I've been following you guys on uh, social media. And like mm-hmm. the last... What, six, nine months you've been traveling around the world, um, trying to get recipes, looking at, at uh, other restaurants, famous restaurants around the world. What do you, obviously trying to see, okay, what great ideas are going out there and what, what, what restaurants and, well, you were in South America, I guess you were in, were you were in Europe, Europe as well? Yeah. I was in Europe. Yeah. You we were in the Caribbean, uh, Los Angeles, Boston, Chicago. Morocco. Morocco. Yeah. What did you discover? Did you come back with any, any one, one, one dish, one drink, Marco? What did you come back with? <laughs> Nothing. These guys are the lucky guys that got to Listen. travel. I oh, was, you stayed home? <laughs> yeah, they were the ones traveling. I, I had resigned from the Palms, and I was helping out at, up at the Summit, up at the Summit Club in uh, Las Vegas. So these guys are doing all the traveling. I mean, one thing that I definitely learned is that, um, man, when you live in the United States, you take so many things for granted. Just, uh, you know, being in the Caribbean for what, six, seven months, your, your whole lifestyle of eating is different, you know, and you're just like, wow, we've got it made in the United States. We're almost humbled. But, uh, you, you know, wherever you go, you have to eat. That's, that's at the, that's the, at the bottom line. So when you eat, eat the best because you're, treating yourself. You're not cheating yourself. And we want to give our customers the greatest experience when it comes to dining. And we've eaten from traveling a lot. We've seen a lot of great places in Europe and in the Caribbean. And we see things that have done great. We see things that have done not so great. And we take those experiences and apply them to what we want to do in everyday um, in everyday business. So it's a plus. We were very fortunate and blessed to travel. You, you know what else, Ed? One of the things that I think that all of these places have in common uh, that we went to is that their best dishes and the restaurants that we had the greatest experiences at are the ones that didn't overcomplicate the experience. They didn't go overboard and try to do something that's just so out of out of the ordinary just yeah. to grab media attention or social media uh, attention. The places that have the best are the ones that stuck to traditional recipes and did everything really, really well. And you'll see a lot of that in how we execute this restaurant. What can we look forward to on the menu? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's a steakhouse. So we'll, we'll throw that out of the box. We know it's a steakhouse. <coughs> what we're going to do, we're going to switch it up and do some uh, table side favorites, um, table side desserts, um, and just what I do, what we just said, simplicity, but the best of the simplicity world, the greatest steaks, USDA prime, the greatest fish from all over the world, 
Um, and uh, it's going to be a home run. It's going to be an amazing restaurant. It's going to be a fun restaurant, an exciting restaurant. And bringing our knowledge of everything that we've seen in the last 22 plus years uh, and putting it, putting our hearts, minds, and soul into this restaurant. You're going to see some flames in the dining room, Ed. <laughs> uh, love that smell, you know. <laughs> what about desserts? Desserts, we're, we're not going to mention what we're going to do table side, but we'll have some table side desserts and some interact desserts, old school. You're smart, you can figure what that might be. But um, there's been a lot of requests for, for a lot of old things that I've done in the past. And just, uh, you know, um, bringing it back to the table and revising it and making it better. If you can believe that, there is always to make things better. And that's what we strive to do in this business is make things better. You've always got to go forward. You can never go backwards. You can go backwards, but bring it forward 20 years, you know? And that's what we're doing. Improve on it. Always Absolutely. improve. Always improve, yes. And, uh, and what about the wines and the bar? Wines and bar program, we've been talking to some people. Oh, we want to make some stuff that's competitive and really cool and new with some nice twists in town. And we want to keep wine prices. Like a lot of places in town, the wine prices are really high. And especially from dining out in other cities, we've traveled and dined in other cities. Wine prices are, are significantly different outside of outside of Las Vegas, minus like the big cities like New York or Los Angeles. But even in LA, wine prices are, are really approachable. And in Vegas, some of the stuff that's it's just not, they make it unapproachable for people to go and 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 taste something new that they want to try, but maybe they won't try because it's priced out of their price range. So we want to make stuff that's approachable and tastes uh, tastes fantastic. You know? And uh, you you know one of the things is on on the cocktail menu, Ed, that we you know from from going around for the last year or so and and tasting stuff and going to different restaurants. It's almost, and I, I don't mean to bring it up in a negative way, but so many places exaggerate and you open up their cocktail menu and you look at the first signature cocktail and it's over $20, it's $25, yeah. $26 for a Manhattan and old fashioned. <laughs> and I respect that, you know, a lot goes into that. Recipes go into that uh, and so many ingredients, but there's a way to do it where you don't have to price and you can still offer an amazing cocktail. So our, our program is going to be very much centered around being fairly priced for who we are, but also being very avant-garde and delicious cocktail program. Delicious. Well, thank you so much, uh, Yassine. Uh, Marco, Barry, thank you. Barry's Downtown Prime. We'll be back in October, and we'll be taping and filming the inside, because I'm really excited about taking a look at it. Thanks, Ed. Can't wait to thanks. do it again. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you. Good luck, guys. Yeah, you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Take care. Bye. Enough said. Call Ed. EdBernstein.com.